Hello, welcome to 15 Minutes of Faith brought to you by Inner City Women of Faith. I am your host, Nicole Rivas, and our topic for today is pushing past the safety of sameness to embrace all that God has for you. Pushing past the safety of sameness to embrace and grab hold of the richness that God has for you. So our text that we're gonna be working on is a very familiar text. Almost everyone who has heard this, even if you've never gone to church, you've probably heard this text. It is the story of the Tower of Babel. Now I'm not gonna read the whole thing because of our limited time together, but I'm gonna read a piece, right? So it starts off with humanity. This is after the flood, after, Everything has had to start over and humanity is moving across the plains. And they come to a place that they find comfortable and they say to each other, they said to each other, we're picking up in verse three, they said to each other, come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used bricks instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so that they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth and they stopped building the city. So to really understand what this story is about, first, we've got to uh, disabuse ourselves of some of the things we learned as a child. Number one, God is not mad about the tower. He's not jealous about the tower. He doesn't think that they're really going to build a tower that reaches all the way to heaven. In fact, if you read the text, and unfortunately, we don't get to read it in the original Hebrew, but if we could, where it says here, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower the people were building. That's actually humor. Because the point is, is that whatever they were building was so small and insignificant, God couldn't even see it from heaven. <laughs> he had to come all the way down to earth and be like, wait, I can't see that. Let me go down there and see that tiny little thing that they're building. So <laughs> that's the humor of the text. You're supposed to understand that what they think is this great city and tower to the heavens is so small that God has to come on down to even see it. So that's a little humor in the story. So the idea that somehow God was threatened by a tower that was gonna make it to heaven is just not the case. It's a joke and it's meant to be a joke. Um, with that being said, since this isn't about really building a tower to heaven, and then let me explain that a little more too. At the time there was, Near here, because right before here, we're introduced to Nimrod of Babylon, who becomes the ancestor of Babylon. They had a religious practice where they would have a tall religious tower, and then the tip of that tower, they would say that tip reached to heaven. So even in their ideas, they're, they're foreshadowing a religious practice of the Babylonians, which is this idea that it's tall tower with a little tip on the top, that's the heavens. So all of it is meant to be irony. It's meant to be making fun of the Babylonians. And it's meant to suggest that what they were trying to do was impossible anyway, and they weren't gonna accomplish it. So if that's the case, then why is there this response from God? Why does God come down and say, oh, no, 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 we gotta put a stop to this. Because if they've put their mind to this, then nothing is impossible for them. What is it that they're really trying to accomplish? To understand that, you've actually got to back up a chapter. You got to get back to chapter nine, right? 
And you got to realize that this is right after the flood. So this is a second creation story. In the first creation with Adam and Eve, God tells Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, take dominion over the earth. Now there's been a flood, all of humanity is wiped out except for a handful of people. And God's command in chapter nine, verse seven is a repeat of the original command. He says, as for you, be fruitful and increase in number, multiply on the earth and increase upon it. So basically we're starting over and God's like, okay, the same rules apply. This is what you need to do. Increase and go forth in all the world, taking dominion of all the world. So humanity starts off as usual. Okay, God told us to move forth, conquer the whole world. And then as they're moving along, they start getting comfortable. They start thinking, well, you know, I don't know what the whole world is. I, I don't know what's out there. Where I am, this is kind of safe. Out there is kind of scary. You know, we all know each other. We're all good together. I'm not sure about this whole plan of going in all the earth. So instead of that, let's build ourselves a city. And that's how the Tower of Babel comes about. And what do they say? Why are they building the city? They say it right in verse four. Let us build a city with a tower that reaches heaven so that we may make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we will be scattered over the face of the whole earth. So in other words, God's plan is for us to go forth. Our plan is to build walls and stay safe on the inside. So let's build walls so that we can hide from what's scary out there and be safe in here away from everybody else. You get it? Yeah. So actually what they're trying to disobey and run away from is the unknown. They're trying to build walls and all gather together of like mind and sameness. And God says, mm, that's not the plan. That's not the plan. You are my image. You are my representative. You are supposed to go forth in all the world, not hide behind walls and give yourself a name. Baptist, Methodist, <laughs> Seventh-day Adventist, whatever you want to call yourself, and then hide behind walls of sameness. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be going in all the earth. So the thing that God says, uh-uh, we got to stop this. Because if they make up their mind to do this, they're going to do it. The thing he's stopping is humanity's determination to exclude anything that's different, anything that's unknown, and cluster together in sameness, hiding from the world. That's what they were determined to do. And that's what God was determined for them not to do. So how does this problem fix? Why then confounding their language so they are not all speaking the same language? Hmm, what's the lesson there? Well, if what I'm afraid of is the unknown, so I'm hiding here together because out there is unknown. If now we don't speak the same language, the unknown goes from the outside to the inside. And now the very thing I was afraid of, the unknown is now inside. And because I haven't dealt with that fear, now I run away <laughs> from the unknown that's within. <laughs> so I run away because think about it. If they could have the audacity to think that they could build a city and a tower to the heavens, you don't think that they could figure out each other's languages? You don't think that they could figure out how to point at a hammer and say, hammer, hammer, and keep working? Of course they could have. But what stopped them? Their fear. Their fear of what's different. Their fear of the unknown. That's what stopped them. And suddenly, because they were different from one another, their fear of one another became greater than the fear of being scattered, and they pulled away 
from one another. Wow, is that a lesson for us? It's not a lesson about scary towers that God's intimidated about. It's a lesson about us being afraid of walking out in purpose, us being afraid of moving outside the walls of our churches, outside the walls of our families, outside the walls of our race, outside the walls of our religion, outside all the walls we build to protect ourselves in the comfort of sameness. And God is saying, no, you're my representative, go forth. Go forth and embrace the whole world because I have given you dominion over it. And we're so busy clustering, clustering and hiding. Really? We have to stop that. We have to stop that because when we cluster and hide in sameness, we miss all the blessings that God has for us. Not only does he miss the, but do we miss the blessings that he has for us, but we fail to bless everybody out there who's looking for us, who's looking for the representatives of God to bless them. And this attitude that if I don't understand you, then that's the scariest thing. Think about that. Think about that. I can build a tower to heaven and I am not intimidated to do that, but I am terrified if you don't sound like me. Hmm. Sound ridiculous? Really? Well, how about this? I can build a nation and do a bold experiment with this thing called democracy, but I can't hang with you if you're of a different culture. If you are a Democrat instead of a Republican, I can't understand you. I can't make the effort to understand you because, whoa, that's too scary. That's too scary. If I am white and you are black and you're trying to talk to me about the injustice of police brutality, I'm gonna shut that down. I'm gonna run from you because yes, I can build a nation like America, a shining star on a hill, but I can't take the time to understand the Black experience because that's too scary. Really? Really? Or I can get education and I, I can achieve in my life, but when I come home, I can't deal with my spouse because they speak a different language and having to sit and figure out their language, well, that's too hard. Really? Really? It is not too hard. It is not too hard. What's too hard is overcoming the fear of the other. The fear of the other. Overcome that and you can do the impossible. Overcome that and you can do the impossible. We together can do the impossible and not in defiance of God's orders to conquer and subdue the earth, but in furtherance of his orders. Understanding one another, making the time to understand each other's gifts and talents, we can move forward boldly, boldly conquering the earth, which is ours for light, for love, for God. That is our lesson for today. And if you receive that, if you say, you know what? Yeah, it's scary. Yeah, interacting with people who are different than me is hard, but it's worth it. And I want to do it. Then I invite you to invite the Holy Spirit to empower you in that. Holy Spirit, give me wisdom. Holy Spirit, give me insight. Holy Spirit, help me to hear more than what people are saying. Help me to see beyond my culture. Help me to see beyond my gender. Help me to see beyond my class, beyond my nationality, even beyond my religion. Help me to see into the hearts of others and understand them. Now, if you have Christ, you already have the Holy Spirit. So you ask that question and the Holy Spirit should be popping already. Now, if you don't have Christ and therefore don't have the Holy Spirit, well, let's solve that right now. 
let's just say, I want the Holy Spirit. I want my helper. I want someone to help me with my understanding to move past sameness. So Jesus, love you. Come into my heart and make you Lord and Savior of my life. And let's do this. Let's move forward in victory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us today for this word. And I hope you were inspired by it. If you would like to support our ministry, help us keep coming to you on the radio, on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram at Inner City Women of Faith. That's where you can find us. If you want to help us with that, please go to our website at innercitywomenoffaith.org and support us in our ministry. We love you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.